Welcome to another video. Let's do some differentiation and let's find some tangent lines from this problem. Typically, when I have a problem like this, I'm looking for the limit, right? But this one is not a limit problem. It's actually a function that has a tangent line at the point x equals minus 3. So in order to find the equation of a tangent line, first you have to know what the slope is at that point, which means you have to evaluate the derivative of the function, which shares the same slope as the tangent line. And you also have to get a point on the graph. So we need two things to be able to find the equation of the tangent line. We need to know the derivative of the function. And at that point, we need to know the values of x and y. They already gave us the value of x, so we just need to find the value of y and then use the point slope form formula to find the equation of the tangent. Okay, before we get into the video, remember to like this video, share it, and leave a comment in the comment section. And if you're not subscribed, be subscribed. Let's get into it. So the very first thing we're going to do is to try to find the derivative of this function. Okay, it's not a usual function, so clearly because you have the exponent being a variable, we will have to do some implicit differentiation by introducing natural log to both sides of the function. Okay, it's our way out. So we're going to say that if we take the natural log of both functions, or maybe before we take the derivative, why don't we try to find the value of y when x is minus 3? Let's do that, okay? So if we evaluate y when x is negative 3, it's going to be the value of 1 plus 2 over negative 3 raised to power negative 3. And we know that this is going to become 1 minus 2 thirds, right? 1 minus 2 thirds. So I can rewrite this as 1 minus 2 thirds raised to power negative 3. But 1 minus 2 thirds is the same thing as 1 third raised to power negative 3. But anytime you have a negative exponent, you can flip what's inside so that this is the same thing as 3 to the third power. And this is 27. So the point that we're talking about, okay, the point in question, ha, I like that. The point in question is the point negative 3, 27. Okay, so this is the point where this is going to happen at negative 3, 27. Okay, what else do we have to do? We need to now find the derivative of the function. So, we're going to look for y prime of the function. So, we're going to say, um, since y is equal to this, we have 1 plus... You see this 2 over x? I'm going to write it in a way that's easy to differentiate. So, I'm going to write it as 2x to the negative 1. Okay? Raised to power x. So we can take the natural log of both sides, like I said at the beginning. So the natural log of y will be equal to the natural log of this function, 1 plus 2x to the negative 1 raised to power x. And we know this x can come down here so that we have the natural log of y is equal to x times the natural log of 1 plus 2x to the negative 1. And that's it. So now... Let's differentiate. Remember differentiation here will have to be implicit because we did not isolate y. y is still the argument of a function. So applying implicit differentiation, we're going to differentiate both sides with respect to x. Okay, we do the same thing here, equals d dx of this. If you differentiate the left-hand side, remember the derivative of any natural log function is the derivative of the argument divided by the argument. So what's the derivative of y? It's just y prime, which is what we're looking for, divided by y itself. Now when we go here, we clearly have a product. Let me rewrite this. This is a function of x, and this also is a function of x. So we have to apply the product rule. So it's going to be, we differentiate the first, and then we keep the second, 
So if we differentiate x, it's going to be 1. Okay, let's write it that way. 1 times, and we're going to keep this. This is going to be the natural log of 1 plus 2x to the negative 1. Plus, we're going to now keep the first and then differentiate the second. This is why I rewrote it, because differentiating this is a lot easier. If you differentiate this now, that's you're differentiating the natural log of 1 plus 2x to the negative 1. Remember, the, der the derivative is always the derivative of the argument divided by the argument. So it's going to be, the derivative of this is going to be minus, it's going to be minus 2x to the negative 2 divided by the argument, which is 1 plus 2x to the negative 1. And that's it. Okay, so this is where this topic is nicer. You don't have to clean up whatever you have done because we're not looking for the derivative of the function. We're looking for the slope. And when you're looking for the slope, you need to plug in the number, plug in this x, and then you get an actual number, not a function. So we're not looking for the function. Once you get the derivative correct, you can plug in x at any time, and whatever you get is your answer. But just to clean things up a little bit, let's isolate y prime, and at the same time, well, we're going to clean up a little bit. So look at this. y prime is going to be this side multiplied by y. So we're going to say y prime is equal to this side I can write as the natural log. Now this I can rewrite as, let's quickly look at it. 1 plus 2x to the negative 1 is this thing we had here, is 1 plus 2 over x. If you give it a common denominator, this 1 can be written as x over x, so that you have x plus 2 over x. So I'm going to write this as x plus 2 over x. Nice. Plus, if I go here, I'm going to have x multiplied by, you see this is going to be minus 2 over x squared, minus 2 over x squared, right? And then it is divided by this, but this expression here is this expression. So when you divide this by this, is the same thing as flipping, and you have x plus 2. You see that? Nice cleanup. And then you multiply by y, but what did we say y was? Is this whole expression. So you put it here, it's, and this whole expression here is this expression raised to power x. So it's going to be x plus 2 over x raised to power x. Nice. Let's do one more cleanup. And then y prime is going to be... Um, the natural log of x plus 2 over x right here plus you see this x will take out this this will take out this so you end up with just minus 2 over x plus 2 here minus 2 over x plus 2 that's what's in here and on the outside you have this guy x plus 2 over x raised to power x. So let's evaluate what y prime is. So y prime evaluated at negative 3 will be equal to the natural log. If we plug in negative 3 here, this is going to be negative 3 plus 2. That's going to be negative 1 over negative 3. So this is going to be just one third minus. If you put negative 3 here, this is going to become plus because this will be 2 over minus 1, which is going to be plus 2. Oh, it's looking nice. And then we're going to multiply this by, if you plug in negative 3 here, oh, remember we already evaluated this at the beginning. If you plug in negative 3, you're going to add, end up with 27. So this is the slope of your graph. It's going to be 27 ln of this plus, just leave it that way. And then we go back and just find the equation of tangent line. So the equation of tangent line is, remember how we use the slope point 
form. We always say it is y minus y1 equals m into x minus x1. Okay, so what does this tell us? It tells us that we're going to have y minus our y1 is 27 is equal to the slope. This giant slope is what we're going to write. So that's going to be, is there another way we can write this? I'm just going to leave it that way. I'm going to write it as 27 times the natural log of 1 over 3 plus 2. Ah, that's, that's our m multiplied by x minus, what is x1? Negative 3, which is going to make it plus 3. I can move this 27 over here so that I can say plus 27 and delete it from here. I don't want to simplify. I'm going to stop here. I know it doesn't look like what you want to see, but the most important thing is you're able to find y prime for this function. You're able to plug in correctly and you're able to secure the point. So these are the crucial points of this exercise. Your ability to find y prime, which is a crucial point at this point, and you're able to evaluate correctly and you're able to plug in the two values. Simplifying this may not give you as much points. It depends on what your teacher or your professor wants. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.